Hello, in this session we're going to review the Turbot console as well as features related to Google's cloud platform for governance controls. Turbot is a GraphQL API backend, so all the information that I'm going to showcase today in the demo, you can query out of the product or you can mutate against it. We're also a provider within Terraform, so you can manage these configurations in Terraform as well. Uh, but in today's session, I'm going to showcase the console. And so to get started, a user will be represented with a login screen. Uh, you can have set up against Turbot local directories, SAML-based directories, LDAP-based directories. You can have multiples that you can pool against as well as bind profiles against. Uh, in this session, I'm just going to log in with my Google Authentication or my Turbot.com credentials. Uh, and so I was already logged in. I'm just going to log back into my session. Uh, but if I had uh, was logging in for the first time, I would go through the, the SAML MFA process just like any other uh, directory authentication. Uh, so here I land into a profile page about myself. I could see a list of all my control summaries across uh, my major components or major parts of my environment. Uh, I can see some favorited uh, locations of my, my organization that I can hop right into. I can log into different cloud environments quickly. Uh, but I'm just going to focus on my Bob's demo account for today's session. And right there, I just jumped out of my profile page. I'm still authenticated as myself up here. And I hopped into my Bob's demo account. And this is actually just a folder within the hierarchy that sits within the sales organization or the sales folder, which then sits in a, in a global entity called Turbot that has many folders and cloud accounts, etc. So in this particular ecosystem, I have uh, an Amazon account, a Google project, Azure subscription, some Kubernetes clusters, Linux hosts that are represented in, within this um, hierarchy. Uh, in anything within Turbot, you can see the direct CMDB entry of that particular resource that you're focused on. You could see all the related activity, the controls, which are the health of your policies, uh, your actual policy configurations and settings, your resources and permissions that you have across not only Turbot, but if you're using us for Amazon, Azure, Google, uh, etc. permissions, then we can you can also manage that on that screen. Uh, but to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire off some some resources within Google to show you how Turbot's going to react and pick up those resources uh, within the CMDB and then also showcase how the guardrails or the governance controls are going to run uh, against those resources. Uh, so I'll go into my Google project uh, that's related to that. And so this is my Bob demo project uh, that's, that's referenced on the, in the Turbot screen here. Uh, and so to get started, I'll just create a Google storage bucket. All right, so we'll go to the browser. And I'll create a bucket here. So in this, in this example, Bob, as maybe a developer in, in one of his uh, GCP projects, creates a Google storage bucket. And within that, you know, Bob, the developer, didn't necessarily know what the company policies may be uh, to maybe enforce versioning on that bucket, uh, certain labels, uh, certain encryption standards. And so all the governance controls uh, that might be set by the organization as a developer, it might not know or might not care what those configurations are. And that's where Turbot comes in is to detect that resource creation or that resource change and then react to those with policies that are going to be enforced. And so in that example, I had just created that storage bucket and Turbot's going to pick that up within the activity. And so that bucket was already picked up and configured by Turbot with those policies. Uh, and so I could see this Bob Demo GCP bucket that I just created. And I can just, let me just filter right on that. And just so what that did right there is I just filtered and moved down the hierarchy straight to that particular storage bucket. And I could see all the activities that Turbot took action on. And so if I go all the way down from the start, you know, Bob created this bucket. And once I created that particular storage bucket, right, which was just an empty bucket within the U.S. region, uh, Turbot then fired off a bunch of uh, controls that it was going to uh, set off in the environment based on the policies that I had set. 
And then it's also running some overlays for CIS controls. It's then starting to run those policies and calculate the reasoning behind them. It's then starting to fire off alarms based on the configurations of that bucket. And because I have controls that are set to enforce, uh, we're also going to see Turbot take action. So not only is Turbot going to alarm, like that versioning is not enabled, is also going to set versioning in this example and update that. And so when I can actually see the diff history of what Turbot did, so it not only did versioning and labeling, but it also encryption at rest, it updated it to a custom managed key that it automatically created uh, on the developer's behalf. And so there's a number of policies that fired off from labeling to, to encryption to uh, all the way down to versioning here. And all that happened underneath the developer. And so the value prop here is that the developers can have native access into GCP. And they could have done this through the console. They could have done this through Terraform or in, through an SDK or the, the, the shell console. However they felt that they needed to do a deployment or an update or a change, Turbot's going to react to all the stack driver events that are happening in the background. And then it's going to take action like you just saw. And so all this is happening in real time. The CMDB is completely updated uh, in real time. So all those configurations about the bucket and everything that had happened is updated. It's completely searchable. So if I was to search for this uh, Bob Demo GCP bucket, it's already there in the CMDB and searchable. All the metadata here can be searched across in the CMDB as well. Uh, the activity that I showcased, also the controls that are set. So I can not only see the storage controls that I had set in the environment, and so across my in my bucket in this example, I have controls around versioning and labels and encryption at rest. Uh, but I also have those CIS controls overlays so I can see how well I'm performing against not only my company policies, but also to en enterprise uh, best practices like CIS. Now here I'm just looking at my Bob demo GCP bucket, but if I went up the hierarchy to uh, all the storage buckets in the US region or all of the resources within Bob demo project, now I'm looking at a higher level of controls across different resources like Compute Engine and Network, Kubernetes, etc. But here I can see, I can then start analyzing, well, what is my biggest area of concern? I could sort by alerts. I could see across my Google project here that uh, my CIS overlays of controls are the biggest issue. I can drill in there. I could see all of my CIS controls um, that I have that I have set. So I can see uh, each section of that CIS report. I can drill in even further of that report and get to individual sections and look at. Uh, for in this example, I can look at you know section 402 on block project wide SSH keys on virtual machines. And I could see each virtual machine within, in this case, this one, de uh, this one project, and I could see what's being adhered to. But I can keep going up the hierarchy to look at a, a broader visualization across all of my projects, uh, across my organization. And so here, for example, I have an instance here that is adhering to uh, SSH Y keys, but well, showcases how a uh, change in Turbot will also update uh, the CIS report in real time. And so uh, here I'll just go to the compute engine. And we'll load up that screen, taking a There we go. So I have this uh, GCP uh, virtual machine instance, so Bob Demo GCP instance 323. This is another resource managed by Turbot in the CMDB. In this use case, I'm going to make a minor change uh, by adjusting the SSH wide uh, uh, keys. And so here I will uh, edit. Block the SSH or on on uh, unblock the SSH keys. Save. Uh, 
All right, and we'll wait till that officially saves there, and then we'll, we'll view this in Turbot. All right, great. So we'll go back here, and, and we'll look to see how this instance was updated. So we can go right to the instance itself, and we can look at the the history of what had happened here. So uh, we could see here, Bob, uh, that I updated. I updated and and removed the block SSH key so I can see the actual diff history of what Bob had done. And the cause of that had updated, not only is our Turbot policy uh, into an alarm state now, but also our alarm for uh, CIS controls section 402. And Turbot then comes in and it um, will, and because I have it in force mode, it then will actually reset the configuration and so now it's going to update again, and I could see the, the diff history that it added back the, the block SSH keys, and then everything now had turned green. And so Turbot not only is showcasing your alarms against your policies that you set, but also against the CIS controls. And that's all updated in real time and visualized uh, within the, the, dash, the live dashboards that we have, or down to the very specific details that you can get to in the controls here. Now, how to set policies within Turbot, if we just go back to that bucket that we were, we were working with earlier, I'll showcase some of the, the policies that we had set there to talk through some of those examples in a little bit more detail. And so as an example, just going back to this uh, particular storage bucket, I could see all of the policies that I have set against that bucket. So the CIS controls, um, I have uh, set you know, 501, 503, 502 is set to skip uh, in this example, but I have these turned on. I have labeling being enforced, which, which we saw quickly. Um, I have some other controls in here. So my active controls are around the active age of those buckets and how long they can live for um, to um, whether or not it's approved or not. So is that the right naming convention? Is it in the right region? And if it's not, you can automatically delete it or alarm. Um, you can automatically enforce encryption, versioning, etc. And so number of different examples here that I have set. Uh, but just to talk through how to set a policy, in Turbot, it's literally point and click. And so if you wanted to set one of our 6,000 plus pre-can policies, uh, as a simple setting, you can set things to skip, meaning that maybe you don't care about bucket versioning on this particular bucket or some other layer of the hierarchy that you can set, whether across the region or across the project or grouping of projects across your folders. You can set it to check. So you might say, well, I don't want Turbot to enforce and you know, I don't want it to skip, but I just want to an alarm and know whether or not the uh, storage bucket uh, has version enabled or disabled. Uh, or you could set it to enforce. So what you saw earlier was that Turbot enforced versioning on the bucket. And so it handled that uh, immediately uh, across. When you set policies, you can also set the precedence for that policy. So you can set whether or not it's required or recommended. When a policy is required, it's mandated against all of the descendant resources. So when you set a policy, it will automatically inherit down your hierarchy. So if you set a policy at the project level, it will automatically, in, in this case, inherit all the, all the way to your buckets in every region. Um, and you can require that that setting is in place. And the only way to change that policy is to reset the policy or to make an exception to the rule. And so if I want to make an exception on this particular bucket, it's the same way that I'm setting the policy here and I can make a change. So the cloud team can come in, uh, make an exception to the rule that's required. But you, there might be circumstances where you might want to delegate authority down to your application team. So as a cloud team, you might recommend a default so versioning is not, in this example, versioning is not a, a top priority um, policy that you set, and maybe it's more of a guidance or recommendation. You can set that versioning should be enforced uh, to be enabled, uh, but it's just a recommendation. And then you can delegate authority down to your application teams to toggle that on or off or as they see fit. You can annotate why you're setting the policy, so you can write some uh, comments or documentation. You can relate it to control policies. Uh, you can also expire those policies as well. 
And so you can never expire the policy settings, it's always going to be enforced, or you could set it to some one of the pre canned um, durations or some custom period of time. And then you can go create it or set the policy. So in this example, uh, on this particular bucket that we have created together, it's actually inheriting a policy all the way from the sales organization. And so I have this complete hierarchy here where I have Turbot as the global level. There's no policy set there. But within the sales folder or part of the organization, that's a policy that's set and it's inheriting all the way down to my, my other folder called Bob's Demo, to my Google project called Bob Demo Project, down to my multi-region US in the project, down to this bucket. And so that inheritance is happening automatically. So I can just set policies once and then have them inherit for any new or changed resources in the environment. Now, as another example, um, so we had looked at the simple way to set policies, uh, skip, check, and force. But there may be use cases where you have nuances or conditions around those pre cam policies that you might want to set. And so that's what we call calculated mode or calculated policies. And so with calculated policies, you can set um, a query that goes against your, um, your bucket that then renders with a template that's going to wrapper your pre-canned um, policies that we have so that you can set conditional logic such as you know, if the bucket has a certain name or if it has a certain tag or if a certain configuration, you know, then do X. And so in the use case that we had together, uh, my bucket uh, didn't meet these conditions. So the conditions were if the bucket was named Bob Demo Temp uh, or started with it as the prefix or if the if the tags had test temp in them, then disable versioning. But because it didn't meet those conditions, it actually enforced versioning. And that's why that value got inherited. Now with calculated policies, you could do live testing of these templates. And so uh, like as an example, in this use case, I could pick my, my demo bucket as, a, as an example. This is a GraphQL query that's simply pulling the bucket name as well as the tags that, are, uh, that Turbot had generated. And so here, these were the tags that it had enforced on the bucket earlier, uh, such as like a company name that Bob created it at what time, etc. Now, all this was um, is the metadata on that bucket and then that's rendering against this template here so I could see what the result would be. So this particular uh, bucket here in this example would actually enforce um, enable. But if I was to change this to, to make this so that it actually would meet the condition, like if it started with Bob-Demo, which this bucket does, that, that just does a live use case so I can test my template, I can test my query in real time. And so it's a nice testing tool to test your calculated policies so that you can then set different conditions in your environment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just show this to you live. So if I added the, the key value pair test temp, it should disable versioning in real time. And so what I'll do is I'll go back uh, to my to my project here. I'll go to my storage browser. I'll go to my bucket here. And go to labels. Okay, so these were the labels that got enforced automatically earlier, just like you saw in the Turbot metadata. And so if I added the label test temp and hit save, And then let me refresh the Turbot console. All right, great. So Turbot here on my Bob Demo GCP bucket. There's me here updating that storage bucket, adding the key value pair of test temp. And then what had happened once that, that configuration was set Turbot then recalculated the policy. So it used to be enforce enabled, now enforce disabled. And because that's the new policy calculated, now I'm in an alarm state. So my bucket's no longer meeting policy because it has the test temp tag or label. 
now it's not meeting those that condition anymore um, where uh, now the bucket should have disabled versioning and so it goes into alarm it disables versioning I could see the CMDB update and now everything's okay and so what Turbot had done behind the scenes was now updated versioning um, to no longer be enabled true and so all that happens in real time as you saw once changes are happening, Turbot's recalculating the reasoning of those policies and automatically making updates in the environment. Now, we just reviewed how to set a simple policy, a calculated policy, and then we also have the concept of Terraform stacks. And so a Terraform stack uh, is another way to set a policy. So this is different than, you know, t uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can manage Turbot with Terraform, so that's how you configure Turbot with Terraform. We also have another feature where you can set policy Terraform stacks as policies that get automatically enforced across your projects. And so I'll just simply just show you what that pro uh, what that policy looks like. And so what I'll do here is I will uh, go up to my project. Uh, I'll filter on policies. Go to GCP. Go to project, and go to my stack. So in this example, I have a policy. So instead of it saying skip, check, or enforce, my policy setting is my Terraform HCL. And so in this example, I'm setting a uh, Terraform. So this is Terraform out of the box. Uh, so no, nothing special here from a Turbot perspective. And so here it's simply uh, creating a uh, pub subtopic and a subscription with some configurations. And then it, what it's going to do is deploy that across the environment. And so this is an example where you can have a stack managed by Turbot as policy. We can basically run the, the plan and apply and continuously enforce that configuration. So if any changes occur, Turbot will then manage the state and automatically set it back. And when you leverage that within the product, you also take advantage of all the activity in the diff history. So as those policy settings are changing, um, you can also see that. So earlier I made a change to the um, to the policy and I can see the diff history of my, my Terraform HCL code in the product. Um, I can also see as I make changes and how Turbot then will reset back the configuration. So that concludes our, our demo today. Any questions, feel free to reach out to us at turbot.com connect.